what's this? This is a dish full of poutine. Now, funny story. <laughs> I lived in Canada for a very long time. I never had poutine in Canada. I still have not had poutine in Canada. The first time I ever had it was here in Osaka in a little cafe called Slice. It's a Canadian cafe. And uh, I, I thought it was fantastic. I thought, what is this? This is great. Now, it's hard to make here in Japan because I can't get cheese curd. So, what I've done here, uh, I've kind of made my own Kuma's Kitchen style of poutine. So, I hope you like it. It's made with um, shredded up, kind of a hand shredded mozzarella instead of cheese curds. And I also use, I make thick oven fried fries. So, they're delicious. They're fantastic. And then the gravy on top. Mmm. Your gravy, hot gravy kind of melts the uh, mozzarella cheese a little bit, so it's just absolutely perfect. Really good. It may not be authentic French-Canadian poutine. This is Osaka poutine. It's pretty good. Go in the kitchen. Let's go make some right now. All right, to make our poutine, we've got, uh, well, across the front here, uh, this part here is going to be um, the, the, for the potatoes, this part here is for the gravy, and then we've got the cheese. So three different things basically, three different mixtures. First of all, let's go with the potatoes. Well, I've got across here in the back for the potatoes, I have got uh, two pounds, 900 grams of potato, and that's about five potatoes about that size. Now what I've done is you take them, cut them into eights, so you cut them so you get little wedges. Um, these potatoes are quite long, so I actually cut them in half because they're a little, they're a little unwieldy. You can leave them as is, especially if you get a rounder potato, you want to keep them uh, whatever size. But I, I like them like this. So two pounds of potatoes basically cut up into wedges. Uh, to go with that, to toss it, I've got a quarter cup of oil, uh, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of pepper. Then over here for the gravy itself, well, across the front here is a quarter teaspoon of pepper, a quarter teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, um, a quarter cup of butter, a quarter cup of flour, and one and a half cups of a um, beef beef um, broth. Now, this beef broth is a little salty, so in this case, I'm not going to use the salt this time. But if it's not salty, you'd want to use that little bit of salt. So I'll put that off to the side because I don't need it in this one. And then across the back here for our mock cheese curds. Uh, I can't get cheese curds here in Japan. There's no way. So what this is, is uh, it's kind of a soft mozzarella. Uh, shredded up into little pieces. Just break into just random pieces. Bigger, smaller, that's fine. A bunch of different sizes. And what I've got here is 12 ounces or 340 grams of mozzarella cheese. All right, so first thing I'm going to do. Let's uh, get that off, make a little room here in the middle. I'm going to bring in the big bowl. I'm going to toss in the olive oil and then I'm going to toss the potatoes into that olive oil and all I do now is toss and toss until I have coated the potatoes with olive oil. Alright, that looks pretty good. Looks like everything's coated. Now I want to just uh, take the pepper and sprinkle it around over top then we're going to mix it a bit more. Do the same with the salt. Just kind of spread that all over the place. And now, mix again so that we can get that salt and pepper clinging to all pieces of potato. Alright, now that looks pretty good. What I've got over here, let's put these off to one side right now. Maybe get that cheese out of the way. Need more counter space. Hey, this is, this is a major amount of counter space for Japan. Uh, we get a lot less usually. Very, very minimal. So in my house, I built an extra counter because who could live like that? All right, what I've done here is I've got a baking sheet and I've got a piece of uh, baking paper on there because it just makes it easier. Um, they tend to stick to the metal otherwise. So what I'm going to do now, first of all, I'll just... Alright, now I've got all the potatoes out on here. I just want to kind of get them into one layer. 
They're going to be random all over the place. That's fine. They can be touching. But because we want one layer so they all get a pretty even amount of heat. And that's about what we're going to get right there. Just perfectly fits on the one baking sheet. Okay, so this is going to go in the oven over there. 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 200 degrees Celsius for 35 minutes. I'm going to bake these until we have some beautiful oven fried fried potato wedges. All right, so let's go with those in the oven. All right, now the potatoes are in the oven baking. It's time to start making the gravy. So first thing I want to do, just take a small pot like this. Got a quarter cup of butter. I'm going to bring that up on uh, kind of a medium low heat. I don't want it too hot. I want to melt the butter first. All right, as soon as that butter is melted, in goes the flour. You kind of stir it in there. A whisk is good, but I've already got my wooden spoon here, so I'm just going to use it. Now what I'm going to do is cook this for about a minute, minute and a half. Just get the raw flavor out of the uh, flour. And what we're creating here is called, it's a roux. It's just butter and flour, and this is what will thicken up the gravy. All right, that's been about a minute. So what I'm going to do now is just add in things like the pepper, the uh, W sauce. Wooster thingy and slowly add in my broth. Add in a little bit, mix it, add some more. It'll start thickening up right away, so just keep adding. You don't want it to thicken up too quick. This is not the best thing for pouring, is it? Best to have something with a spout. Alright, keep adding. You just want to keep stirring and stirring as you're adding it because you don't want it to get lumpy. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. I'm going to add in the rest now. All right. What I want to do now is I'm going to cook this about 8 to 10 minutes. Keep stirring until it thickens up into a nice gravy. All right. Look at that. I've been stirring and stirring this. And this is a perfect gravy. That's just like the way you want it. A little bit runny, not too runny, but look at that thick. Yes. I'll take that off the heat now because the potatoes are just about done. They got a little further to go. I'll take that off the heat, but I'll keep it here, keep it nice and warm. We want this hot because when we pour it over the potatoes and over top of this cheese, it's gonna semi melt that cheese, and that's mwah. So, see you back here in a couple minutes when those potatoes come out of the oven. All right, there we go. Oven fried potatoes. I'll tell you, you eat oven fried potatoes, you don't want to go back to just regular deep fried potatoes anymore. They are delicious. So what I'm going to do now, notice how, because we have them on the paper, easy to flip around. All right, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to bring this guy in here. Um, you can use any kind of dish, basically. You know, so you like it a bit deeper and want to make layers of it. I like this dish here. It's a uh, medium size, perfect. It's all gonna fit in there nicely. So, just shovel the potatoes into here. Oh, there's one that, see, this one touched the metal and it got stuck just a little bit, not bad. If you have them, if you have them just on the metal itself, you'll find that a lot of them will get stuck on there and you lose a lot of potato trying to get them off, so that's why I like to have them on the baking paper. Okay, now just spread those potatoes around a little bit. And now what I'm going to do is take the cheese and just kind of work it through there. You might have to mix it a little bit after just to get it to go down, drop down inside in some places. So just kind of like that a little bit. Oh, there we go. Some of the cheese dropping down between the potatoes. That's going to be good. 
<laughs> this is going to be absolutely fantastic. And now, the final touch. We still got nice hot gravy. You want this gravy to be hot. So, then you just pour it over. And all that hot gravy is going to kind of melt the cheese, which is what you want. You don't, don't need it fully melted. You want a little bit melted, a little soft, still got a little bit of shape to it. Absolutely fantastic. All right, there we go. There is poutine. Yes, it's not exactly the Canadian poutine. Poutine, poutine, I never know which way to say that, but is it poutine or poutine? Anybody who actually is from French Canada, if you could tell me if I am saying it correctly with A, poutine, B, poutine. All right, that would be very helpful. Thank you very much. I've never actually had this in Canada. Yes, I am a Canadian. I've never had it in Canada, but we're having it here now. Enjoy. All right, if you enjoyed this Kuma's Kitchen version of poutine or poutine, whichever it may be, then make sure you stick around and check out some more recipes because there's a ton of them. They're all original Kevin Riley Kuma's Kitchen recipes here on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe because every Monday there's a new one coming out. Also, if you're not yet a patron of Kuma's Kitchen, hey, consider becoming one because for as little as $3, you're supporting creation of, all, oh, look at that, melting cheese, all kinds of uh, unique recipes. And you get all kinds of cool stuff in the Patreon feed also. So now go make this delicious poutine poutine and make cooking fun again with Kuma's Kitchen. Mmm. Oh yeah, do make that.